Hey Airheads, today's episode of Aficionado's Internet Radio is brought to you by Audible.com. If you sign up today, you can get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial if you go to audibletrial.com slash Chris. With over 150,000 titles for your iPhone, Kindle, MP3 player, and my personal preference, the Android, you can choose from many titles out there. The audiobook I recommend is Peter S. Beagle's The Last Unicorn, narrated by Peter S. Beagle himself. A personal favorite of mine, and I definitely recommend that you all check it out. Once again, if you want a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial at audible.com, go to audibletrial.com slash Chris. The link will be in the description. Now, let's start the show. Hey, Airheads. Aficionados Chris here. You're listening to Aficionados Internet Radio. Aficionados Chris. Hey everybody, Aficionados Chris here, and welcome to another episode of Aficionados Internet Radio, and today, well, it, uh, saying this is a special episode would probably be an understatement. Uh, easily one of the biggest things to happen on the show, uh, hopefully not tooting this guy's horn, because if you are a critic on the internet, or an aspiring critic on the internet, you have definitely either heard of this man, watched this man, or most likely religiously want to be like this man. He has inspired a lot of great people out there, many of whom are good friends of mine or people I watch on a regular basis who name him as one of the most highly influential people in the YouTube internet video critiquing community, as it were. I'm not going to brag anymore. This guy is a legend. We have Doug Walker, also known as the Nostalgia Critic. How are you doing? (laughs) My ego is the size of a balloon right now oh my God. I, I can't live up to that what if somebody has not heard of who i am there's no way i can live up to all hey that. you oh. know not everyone gets to be an entrepreneur magazine <laughs> it was funny when they put me in there i'm like you know i do the least amount of entrepreneuring here that's more like <laughs> shot and the other people behind the scenes but uh, uh yeah it's still cool to be in it <laughs> soon enough he'll be in times most 100 influential people or 100 most wanted. Either most way. <laughs> for, for, for some review out there that they didn't agree with. Yes. Maybe <laughs> maybe the editors of Time are Matilda fans. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe they really like Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> <laughs> that, there we go right there. But uh, bring it up. Uh, I guess I'd call this a question because it kind of enters into what I just said. That it is undeniable you have inspired a lot of people uh, to do what they do today, either comedians or critics, either in actual print or, uh, in most cases, the YouTube. Uh, what is it like to really think about the fact that not only do you have a lot of fans, but you have a lot of people who basically look up to you as something of an icon or an idol? Uh, it is strange. I mean, I can't lie and say it's not, but it is also very... Um of course, it's very touching. When I first started off, I was not very good at accepting fan reaction. Like, if somebody recognized me, I just wasn't used to it. I didn't know how to how to react. So I didn't act mean necessarily, but I act, like, concerned. Like, how do you know who I am? You too. Oh, okay. Are you stalking me? <laughs> yeah, anything else you know about me or whatever? And uh, finally, my dad, my brother, pulled me aside and said, Listen, Jackie, yes, you're not going to be anything without these people. you got to know... Uh, how to treat them and how to be accepting and I said I just don't know how I mean then after a while they kept he kept hearing the same stuff over and over oh you're an inspiration you're wonderful and what do you do when you hear this because you've heard so many times and uh, my dad had a great line he said act like every single time you hear it, it's the first time you've ever heard it because that's what people are looking for they're looking to be heard uh, very much and I, I realized that's sort of the fan experience uh, in a nutshell is that they just want to know that they want to express that what somebody has done has meant a lot to them, and they just want to know that the person that inspired them has heard that and that it makes an impact. And every single time somebody does say, I inspire them or I help them get through something or, or anything like that, it, it really does mean the world because it just started off as a jackass thing I did at my parents' house <laughs> and it's just ballooned into this uh, gigantic thing. So uh, it, it's really remarkable. You mentioned that the idea of... Uh you getting used to the idea of people knowing who you are, recognizing you for the work you do. Because I was actually at a convention doing a press gig, and I kept getting recognized for the stuff I do. And I, I'm not on the same level, but it's that same sort of, how do you know what I do? And I'm flattered, <laughs> but glad you watched the content, but how do you know who I am off the top of your head? Yeah, and it's one of those things, whenever somebody does it, there's never... 
if a celebrity does not act right to it, 90% of the time it's not the fan's fault. It's the celebrity's fault because they – there is the sense that you really would not be anything without these people, and you have to know how to react to it, and you have to have the understanding even going in, because uh, you do owe just everything to these people watching you and continuing to watch you, taking time out of their day to go on the Internet where there's millions of things you can just click by and pass by, and not only are they clicking on you, but they are returning to watch you. And especially nowadays, that's just an unbelievable thing to be a part of. And certainly, I mean, but hey, they always say, "Don't bite the hand that feeds you." Yeah, exactly. No, it's it's very true. And I have seen celebrities. Some celebrities are not very good at it. Uh, but I will say, I've seen some fans that do go too far as well. <laughs> uh, well, those definitely- are inevitable. Yeah, out there. yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, there is definitely there is a responsibility to your fan base, definitely, and being very uh, very nice and kind to them when they just want when they just want to say how much you have meant to them. Uh, and there definitely is a responsibility to that. Absolutely. And bring it into that with the whole the content you create. And just for people, I don't know if this is even possible, but if you've somehow never seen the Nostalgia Critic, uh, first of all, check it out. But second, uh, basically like the name of the character would suggest, uh, he's a critic of anything considered nostalgia, 80s, 90s, or at least with his new stuff, uh, current stuff. Uh, basically just reviews in a nutshell. But this one thing I must ask, because I had a, another YouTuber on here quite some time ago called Your Movie Sucks. Uh, who does a very similar thing, reviewing movies, his own thoughts, yada yada. And I've always wondered this for people that put the amount of work into these reviews like you do and a lot of other uh, Channel Awesome or any other people of that same level of content creation is that most people always tell me is that in your case with your video where you say watch movie, write jokes. But has there ever with the exception of like Matilda, obviously, ever been a film or a show or anything where you started producing it, you got really into it, but for some reason or another, it just didn't work as a nostalgia critic episode. Uh, you know, there was one that we were really debating whether or not to do because we surprisingly were not getting that much material, but then there was like two scenes in it where we're like, okay, we have to because this, these two scenes alone, I mean, maybe we can work it through. Uh, and I still don't know if we made the right choice, and that's with uh, Junior, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, it's a movie where Schwarzenegger gets pregnant. How can that not lead <laughs> to incredible comedy, whether good or bad or whatever? And, and it was just so boring. It was so dull that in the middle of the review, we actually have where I fall asleep and we film my dream sequence. That's how desperate we were <laughs> to get jokes out of that review. And when it was all said and done, we're like, you know, this... I don't know if this was a very good review, but at the same time, it did give us Schwarzenegger holding a baby Schwarzenegger, which is the scariest thing ever, and Schwarzenegger in drag, which I'm shocked has not been done at that point. But Schwarzenegger in drag is quite a uh, quite a sight to behold. So just for those two things, we were kind of like, yeah, okay, maybe it was worth it, because uh, a lot of people do still quote those jokes. But <laughs> yeah, it, it was one of the few. Those are actually the toughest movies to do, not the ones that are really bad or i mean or, or just difficult to watch or the ones that are boring because then you can't get any material from them well i remember because a, a friend of mine that movie nerd uh also known as kevin i remember he did a video where he met you at a con and he asked if you would ever do blues brothers 2000 and you basically said well you know it's kind of hard to do you know this isn't funny this isn't funny but you did actually eventually pull off what i think is a very good review for blues brothers 2000 a notoriously bad sequel yeah there's some Movies that I've said before I wouldn't review. I think I did a list a while ago, like the top 10 movies I'll never review, and I think I've reviewed half of them. <laughs> well, I think one of those things is that you kind of think there's no possibility for it. And when I was doing that list, I was still doing sort of the old school nostalgia critic, just in front of a white wall, talking, being angry, yelling, and that's about it. Um, but with the new kind of, uh, with the new routine we're doing now, the new style we're doing now, uh, it's opened it up more to possibilities and sort of different ways that you can do it. So now there's, and we have more time as well. So yeah. there's more variety to the jokes and more possibilities to them. And I think that's why they're, that's why I'm doing so many of these. Like I never thought I would do Demolition Man because everybody was asking me to do it. Uh, but then something about going on Tumblr and just seeing all the wars the, of people either being too offended or trying too hard to offend others, you know, as the internet does, uh, I was just sort of realizing how really like, wow, actually Demolition Man 
is much better now than it was in the past, especially because it said neither side was right. Neither, you know, the ones who are easily offended or the ones looking to offend. Neither one is right, neither one is wrong. It's just these extremes. And when you have that point of view now that you'd never thought of a, for this movie, it's like, how can I not review this? How can I not have fun with it? It became relevant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the material, like, it's that sort of the material falls in its place at the right time. Something else I found out with that movie is that uh, Tumblr is still very easily offendable, except when you say they're easily offendable. That, for some reason, they take really well. <laughs> Ain't that like, ironic? So Tumblr, <laughs> yeah, so many people on Tumblr were like, have you seen this Demolition Man review? Oh my god, he nails us so good, he just makes fun of us, and it's great. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take what you can get. Yeah, oh no, I definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll bring that, because uh, for the record for a lot of people listening, because this has always been a subject of debate, I actually prefer the new style of the Nostalgia Critic compared to the old style that you used to do. You know, uh, post-demo reel, I suppose you could say. Um, yeah, which I really I like the there's a lot more effort put into it. Not to say you didn't put effort in it before, but it's more like a production, I guess. And I, I really love that part of the because uh, I know some people always say like, oh, I wanted to just do the review, but I like the effort in the costumes and the characters and the comedy because I always thought that's what it was about. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where there's always going to be anytime you change. Uh, anything. There's always going to be people that prefer the old. I mean, it's, you probably saw there's people that got upset we changed the color of the wall. I mean, to a, a kind of yellow white to a more bluish white. People flipped <laughs> over that. And I think there's something kind of reassuring about that because when I saw that, I'm like, oh, okay, it's not like these are legit arguments. Just there are some people who can't really let go of the past. And seeing how I'm called the nostalgia critic, I shouldn't be shocked that. <laughs> that makes <laughs> sense. It's in the name. <laughs> But with that, too, I think with that, too, you also kind of have a responsibility to show that you can open up to new stuff and you can tell reviews in new ways and different points of view and sort of show these again. I mean, through characters and songs and different styles, I mean, you can have a totally different way of telling a review that nobody else has been doing. Uh, so I think that's what really sort of drew me to it uh, to come back when I went on a. Uh, uh, when I when I thought I got rid of the character there because I was just not seeing any possibilities for the character or what to do with it anymore and then yeah kind of like in the review must go on said when I saw Odd Life of Timothy Green that sort of brought it, it it just got all these ideas in my head of different ways I could do a review that could be great fun and I just started thinking of other movies I could do in this style um so, yeah, and there's always going to be, you know, a, a small amount of people or, or a big amount of whatever that are going to prefer the old in anything. Uh, but any time we do something where there is something really different, whether it be a song or characters or a story uh, tying into the movie, those are usually the ones that break a million views. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if anyone's ever wondering, when am I going to stop doing that? Well, when they stop breaking a million views, I'll be it's more It's a big deal. Like this, I mean, the other stuff is a lot easier. <laughs> it's so easy just to sit from a white wall and be angry. I mean, that's it's the easiest thing you can do. But, yeah, I mean, the new stuff seems to be what's bringing even more people in and what keeps getting views and people keep coming back to. And anytime we do go back to sort of the more traditional route, like I think with King and I and uh, a few other reviews, they usually don't do as well. Um, so, yeah, so I'm really happy that somebody have gravitated towards uh, just a different way of doing reviews and, and watching it and just seeing a different style. And bringing that up, because uh, like you said, the ones that get some of the most attention are the ones with, I'd say, the most talent and the most effort put into them. Is that that's one thing is that throughout the new era of the Nostalgia Critic, you have gotten a lot of amazing talent included. You know, you've gotten... Uh, uh, Greg Sestero from The Room, Dante Bosco from Avatar Last Airbender, many YouTubers like Brento Floss. Has there ever been a talent that you want to have appear in an episode or just to do something with in the future that you haven't gotten that chance yet? Oh, yeah. there's. Uh, I think people forget every time there's we have a celebrity on, it's, oh, my God, how did he get that person? Uh, there's always a celebrity we asked and they said no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, whether I know what that's kind, like. <laughs> yeah, whether it's either just a kind no or don't you ever look at me again, you hobgoblin, you know, something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, Patrick Stewart's not very nice. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now I'm just imagining him saying that. Get out of my face, you hobgoblin. Um, 
but uh, but no, it's one of the things where it's, and I think everyone sort of thinks, oh, well, everything's handed to you because you have the, this fame now, and it's, no, there's still a lot of rejection, and I think that's a lot of entertainment is how much rejection you get, and that's always going to be a part of it, and you have to be ready for that, but when you do get those few yeses, I mean, it's it's amazing, and you get something as amazing as seeing Pinky and the Brain swear at each other, you know? Um, that is my so, favorite nostalgia critic moment so far. Yeah, but... But in terms of um, in terms of somebody like I really want and haven't gotten yet, I mean, there's a few we're still talking to and working things out in terms of uh, crossovers and such. I mean, I don't want to give them away yet, but uh, yeah, I think that's something where we're always kind of working on something, you know. Uh, but we we have to space them out too because there was a point where I was doing too many crossovers. And people are like, okay, these are nice, but, you know, they don't seem as special anymore because there's so many. So we like to space them out more. Uh, but, yeah, there are definitely some still in the works. Like you said, is that you, sometimes they say no and sometimes they say yes. Like, uh, an example on my channel was uh, a lot of people freaked out when I did my Cowboy Bebop Blu-ray review and I actually got the American voice of Spike Spiegel, Steve Bloom, to make an appearance. And a lot of people were like, how'd you get him? How'd you get him? I just asked him. And he said, yes, <laughs> that's pretty, pretty much that simple. Either they say yes or they say no, you never know unless you try. Well, and another big part of that, too, is I've been getting invited to a lot more cons, and of course there's other uh, celebrities at cons, and if it used to be like I would always film something at a con because I would feel lazy going to a con and they're paying for you to fly out there in your hotel. I'd say, well, I gotta do something. So I used to always film there, but now it's almost turned into sort of this uh, networking uh, thing to do because... For example, Dante Bosco I met at a con, and I wasn't going to be a, hey, can you be in this video? Can you yada yada? It's, you want to talk to him. You want to get to know him. You want to become friends with him. So that then later at the end, it's like, hey, would you be down for flying out sometime? Oh, absolutely. You know, same thing with Rob Paulson and Marisa Marsh. I met Rob Paulson at a con before, and uh, we got along really great. And before I left, I said, hey, can you film something with me? And that was the demo real thing. And then there was another con where him and Marisa Marsh were there. And I knew they were going to be at another con. So I'm like, okay, this one, I'm just going to talk with them. I'm just going to have fun with them. And then the con after that, I'll ask them for the cameo. So it's just much more likely they're going to say yes to you if they trust you and see that okay this it is worth donating my time for this person because i like this person or i get along with this person or i just like their material exactly it's all about you know professionalism networking and have bond and all else being friendly with them they are people yeah no that, that actually makes them i mean i think that makes a much bigger difference half the time than how many numbers you get is how friendly can you be with them i know i've said yes to certain people in podcasts and stuff like that <laughs> simply because oh well they I talked with them before and they seem okay and I've said no to several because they seem really creepy or really desperate or really odd or you know so on and so forth which I still said your yes to yours anyway so don't worry I, <laughs> I was gonna say where the hell do I fall under that <laughs> <laughs> well I'm here aren't I uh... <laughs> uh, this this is one thing I I actually want to bring up is because uh outside of the nostalgia critic you also at least a lot more recently uh you do a lot of these uh vlog review series like uh you do the uh the sibling rivalry with your brother Rob. Uh, you also do the Adventure Time vlogs. Uh, you guys have reviewed several different shows like Gravity Falls. And if I'm not mistaken, you've also started talking about the Netflix new Daredevil show. The, the thing that's always made me wonder about that is, uh, are there any plans for other shows or films in general to talk about on things like that? Because they're not all part of one, or at least I don't think they're part of one particular series. Uh, but has there ever been a show where like it's been highly requested and you go, Maybe we'll do that somewhere down the line. Well, the one that we're doing next that I think we've gotten really the most requests for, I think, ever, uh, is uh, we're doing it right after Daredevil is uh, Steven Universe. Oh. And yeah, I didn't know anything about it, so I think at a con, it was just on one Saturday morning. Actually, at cons, I catch up on a lot of Saturday morning cartoons, because just as I'm getting ready, I turn on the TV, and it's like, there's usually nothing on except something on Cartoon Network, so I just leave it on. And it, the funny thing is, some sort of major episode happened that got even more people saying, because they all at one time said, you have to do Steven Universe, something amazing happens, you have to watch it, and... I think the first episode I watched, I saw that episode. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, well, there went that twist. But, <laughs> there went uh, that. <laughs> but nevertheless, it was very I mean, I'm not going to give away what it is. I mean, and we'll find out. Cause maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not this episode. But it felt like it would be this episode. Um, and then I watched a few after because they're very short. They're like the 10, 15 minutes. And uh, it was really intriguing. And it looked like it was doing stuff that I've never really seen a cartoon show, maybe even any show really do before. They really played around with identity 
in an interesting way, and they do it constantly. And I was like, okay, there's there's stuff you can talk about here that I think is really relevant, especially today. So um, I'm really excited to start watching that. We're, we're going to do it right after Daredevil, and a lot of people have been requesting it. So yeah, that's uh, that's next on the list. Personally, for me as a fan of, of this particular thing, and I know a fact that you and Rob are also big fans. I'd love to see you guys do like vlog reviews of every episode of Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> I, you know, how do I put it? Cowboy Bebop was such a huge show for both of us that we probably can talk about it, but it's, how do, how do I put it? It's kind of like talking about, I don't know, like something so big and so already a part of your life and just so custom you know that you're kind of like what do you even say about your it's too familiar <laughs> you know it's kind of like harry potter it's like that thing was so huge for years and years that you actually almost forget it was even a big thing um but maybe that's all the more reason to do it uh the cowboy bebop is one of those shows where it's like again it's kind of like miyazaki it's like it's so good i'm kind of jealous of it <laughs> i kind of hate it for how good it is these characters and the this atmosphere and these stories and everything are just so good oh, um, that kind of pisses me off <laughs> <laughs> but, but but maybe somewhere down the line we'll do that i i i can't disagree with that i i could talk about that show for hours but we won't <laughs> but uh... there's definitely stuff to talk about in it it's just that for just more that you know, I don't know how much we can talk about because we're so familiar with it. And maybe that, that would either make us really good to talk about or really bad. My assumption would be really bad, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Anything works, I suppose. Who knows? Maybe they'll make a really bad movie directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Then you'll have a reason to talk about it. Yay! <laughs> One final thing for a lot of people, and uh, I think this goes without saying, like I said much earlier in this podcast is that you you are an inspiration to a lot of people, young people, impressionable people who want to do what you're doing or aspire to do what you you uh, you do on the internet. What do you think uh, for all the aspiring video critics, comedians, whatever out there, uh, what do you think would be the best advice you can give to anyone who wants to pursue that? Oh, Lord. Um, it's hard to even say go into doing criticism because there's just so many of them now. And I really fully acknowledge that a lot of the reason the success happened is kind of right place, right time, because nobody was really doing it when I came around. Uh, so first of all, you have to love it. You can't do it to get famous. You can't do it because, oh, I just really want to be known to everybody. You have to do it so that when you look back years later, even if it doesn't work, even if you totally fail and don't go anywhere, you can say, you know what, I'm glad I did that because I love doing this and I'm glad I tried. Uh, so that's the first thing to get down. On top of that, I mean, it's kind of the common stuff you hear. Just be persistent, be passionate, be constant. Uh, put out a lot of videos and try to do something that nobody else is doing. And be honest with yourself. Uh, if you're watching your video and you say, yeah, yeah, I would click on this. If I was just going through the internet and I saw this thumbnail in the first few seconds of this, I would continue to watch it. Then you're probably on the right track. But if you're watching it and you're saying to yourself would i really watch this like don't don't kid yourself don't put on any rose colored glasses just be really honest with yourself would you watch this and the answer is no ask why and then try to change why that is um but like i said you, you can't guarantee anything you have no idea what's going to become popular you know if they knew everybody would do it and everybody would make it uh, but because you don't know you have to have that love for it going in and you have to be able to go in and say, you know what, even if this doesn't work, even if two people watch me and nobody else, I'll be glad that I did it because this is really what I enjoy. I think it's some very sound advice, and everyone should take that into consideration because, let's face it, a lot of you are inspired by this man anyway, so I think that's the best you're going to get. I, I would say, too, on top of that, um, I, I always say be passionate, don't be emotional. Um, because the internet is a very easy place to get emotional, especially for those that get sucked in too much into it. They get too much into the online world, and they don't go outside enough, they don't talk to people face-to-face -face enough, and the internet is amazing, it has changed my life, and there's so many pros to it, but there are some cons, and one of them is you can get too addicted, you can get too sucked into this world. And you, you need your sunlight. You need people. You need social interaction because uh, there's great talent out there that does get lost to that online realm and they just get too addicted to it. And I think sometimes they think it's going to fix things. 
it's going to fix problems that they already that are in them. That's going to fix up some problems, and if anything, it's going to enhance it uh, if you don't do the right things to help it, which is usually just exercise, go outside, talk with people, stay active, you know, have your private time too, but, uh, you know, be a good human being because uh, just being on the internet is not going to fix that. Uh, and only you can fix that. So, I'm sorry, yeah, I, I've seen a lot of people, like, with great talent get lost kind of to themselves and to their emotions, and I think they sort of mistook passion with emotion, and really you want the passion for it. Uh, and emotion is fine, but you want to be smart with it. I, I think you're, at least for my series, you're the first to actually bring that issue into consideration. Because I think that's actually a very valid thing to think about. Is, uh, do continue to have a social life outside of the internet. Well, and this is coming from someone who does, who works a lot. I mean, it, it, I'm kind of glad that most people acknowledge that, like, wow, this guy, what he does must take up a lot of time. It does, but it is... That's why it's all the more important that I have to be able to go outside sometimes, spend time with my wife and uh, and my friends and my brother and stuff, because I can almost guarantee I would not get nearly as much done if I did not have that outlet. Uh, that outlet really does drive that passion even more. Uh, so it, it's very, very important. It's much more important. People underestimate how important it is to be healthy, mentally and physically healthy while you're doing this. And it can play a big, huge part. Very, very true. I can't, I'm kind of at a loss of words. But thank you, Doug. <laughs> oh, <there> you go. <laughs> but uh, for everyone else listening, uh, take his advice. I think it's very good advice. And well, again, who am I kidding? It's Doug Walker. You know him. If you don't know him, check him out. Go to channelawesome.com or heck, just go to the League of Super Critics YouTube channel. You can watch him there too. Highly recommend it. He makes some really stellar content. He's an inspiration to many. I would be lying if I didn't say he's inspired me quite a bit. Uh, but thank you so, so much for taking your precious time because we know how busy you are making content to be on this silly little podcast. It, it's it's a very fun silly little podcast <laughs> i'll take that compliment sir <laughs> thank you so much and please have a wonderful day everybody <laughs>